Pastor Benny Hinn is celebrating 40 years of ministry, taking the gospel to the nations of the world. Look to our precious Jesus today, who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. If we do not begin to move into the prophetic, we will be sunk. God Almighty wants to speak to you in dreams, in visions. On yesterday's program, Pastor Benny Hinn began an important message titled, The Three Realms of the Prophetic. The first realm of prophecy is the Bible. And because it's a biblical revelation, it's prophetic, all the New Testament. And it's called in the Bible, the prophecy of Scripture. So it's the declaration of the Word of God as revealed to man. Now this, this uh, realm of the prophetic contains no errors, contains no mistakes, contains no imperfections. It's inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now the second realm is called the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy is the anointing of the Holy Spirit that enables men and women that don't have the office of a prophet or the gift of prophecy to come under the prophetic anointing, the prophetic anointing of a man of God or the prophetic anointing of a ministry. Now join Pastor Benny as he continues his message by examining the third realm of the prophetic, the gift of prophecy, as described in 1 Corinthians 12, beginning at verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts by the same Spirit. There are differences of administration, the same Lord, diversities of operations, the same God, which works all in all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. I love that. But look at what, what it says. To one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge. To another, uh, it says, by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these works that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. So the gift of prophecy is given for exhortation, ed ed edification, comfort. That's 1 Corinthians 14, 3. So don't you dare let anybody prophesy over you and die. Don't even accept it. If they come and say, you're going to have a bad day, rebuke them. You're going to have an accident, rebuke them. Prophecy is clearly, it says in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 3, look what it says. He that prophesies speaks unto men to edification, exhortation, comfort. There's no, there's no trouble in that one. It's got to it's edify you. It's got to exhort you, comfort you. Now, edification means, means to strengthen Exhortation means to stir you up to do what God wants you to do. And comfort brings peace. So, <sighs> prophecy is the, is the living fire of Pentecost. A prophecy is that flame that kindles the hearts of men in the church. The gift of prophecy is not the ministry of the prophet uh, or preaching. Because uh, preaching, the, the Greek word for preaching uh, means to announce, to evangelize, to declare good tidings. While prophecy means to predict or foretell, a whole different realm. So, those with the gift cannot move outside. Please hear this, very important. Those with the gift cannot move outside the realm of edification Exhortation, comfort. It's impossible. Now, i got to say something here that I think is so important. In that gift of prophecy, and I really believe there's three realms. Some believe there's four because there's the office of the prophet. So you've got the, you, you've got the scripture, 
the uh, scripture of prophecy or the prophecy of scripture, which is really one round, that's the Bible. Then you have the spirit of prophecy, which is the atmosphere of the prophetic. And then you have the gift of prophecy. But I think a part of that gift, somewhat, somehow, God seems to choose certain people with a specific office that is prophetic. Now, some really teach that it's a fourth round. I don't believe that. I've looked at both. I just don't believe it's a separate round. I think it is the office, yes, but that gift operates within that office. But the office of a prophet mentioned in Ephesians 2. Please write this down. Ephesians 2, 19 and 20. Ephesians 4, 11. And the, the, the prophets are vessels. Did you write the this, this, you know, scripture down? Did I give it to you too fast? I'll do it again. Ephesians 2, 19 and 20. In fact, let's put it on the screen. I can read it. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Keep going, please. Verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles, prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And then you have Ephesians 4, 11. 4, 11. That talks about the office of a prophet, one prophet. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, and so on, some evangelists, pastors, teachers. So that is the office of a man or a woman. Prophets are vessels chosen to function accurately in the realm of the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, the discerning of spirits, confirmation, revelation, illumination. Um, they are very, they're into predictions, into visions. Uh, into the ministry of confirmation. We got to have that again in the body of Christ. We need men and women who operate in the word of wisdom, knowledge, who operate in the discerning of spirits, who operate in revelation, who operate in uh, uh, predictions, visions, and confirmation. It's a very powerful thing I just said about confirmation. Because the office of a prophet can confirm you unto the end. No, no, you missed what I said. I went to Oral Roberts because I saw Oral as a prophet. The, the Lord led me to go to his, 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 uh, his condo down here in Newport. And I just showed up one day. I was by myself. Did, no one, nobody with me. I showed up, not knowing he'd be gone in two weeks. I got on my knees in front of his chair. And I said, lay hands on me. He said, why? I said, please lay hands on me. I said, because I believe, and it was the last time I saw him. I said, because I believe my life will be confirmed unto the end. I'll, I'll be around because of this. And he laid hands on me and confirmed my life. I'm telling you people, Bernie Warren, a, a dear, a mighty, mighty in God back in Canada. 19, exactly January of 1975. I'll never forget that. A place called Bizak Center. I had ministered in, in, in that fellowship because I used to, uh, to attend Friday nights. I'd go to that place right outside the airport, outside Toronto, close to the airport. And it was a farm, and people would gather. It's a precious time in the Lord. And he, he, he put his hands on me. He said, I affirm this ministry as of God. He said, I affirm it. It is of the Holy Ghost. And then he said, he spoke words that are happening to this day. To this day, I still see the, the, the effect of that confirmation where he spoke blessings on my life. He spoke that God would protect me from harm. He spoke that God would protect me from sin and then he said, if I did sin, God would restore me. He spoke that over my life in a very powerful way, and I could feel heaven on my soul. That was Bernie Warren, very prophetic man. And Oral spoke the same thing almost with Rex Humbert. I'll never forget Rex Humbert laying hands on me right before he died. He said, no pollution will touch your life. Dear God, I can still feel it. Pollution will try, but it will not come in. That's what he said. He said, no pollution will touch your life. And you think about the power of those words. 
Lift your hands and have a praise break with me. Come on, people. Hallelujah. 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 We need that office again to lay hands on us and confirm us into ministry so no demon can break through that line. The prophetic is our protection. Do you know why I think some Christians are demon oppressed? Because there's no prophetic utterance over them. The prophetic protects you from demons. Because those words will be heard by heaven and by hell. Dear God, I feel the anointing. Somebody say praise the Lord. We need the prophetic people. We've lacked. The, look what's going on in the body of Christ today. Because we've lacked. The, nobody prophesies anymore. Nobody affirms, nobody confirms, nobody has a word of knowledge or wisdom or discerning of spirits. Nobody can affirm anybody's life. Nobody can bring illumination, revelation, utterance. And that's why we're dying. It's time we bring it back. And that's why I'm talking about it tonight. And I want everyone watching the program and, and here to start seeking it with all your might and heart. Let me hear out. Praise the Lord. The ministry of the prophetic is so important. Without it, demons will have a heyday, but they will not. Now, you cannot judge the office. You judge the prophecy. The Bible says all prophecy must be judged in 1 Corinthians 14, 29. We're commanded to judge prophecy, but you don't judge the word of a prophet. It's different. The word of a prophet carries weight with it. When Bernie Warren spoke that confirmation word over my life, I didn't go and judge it. Check it out. I accepted it. Or when uh, Rex Humbard or when Oral Roberts laid their hands on me and prophesied. I still have that picture in my home. When Oral and Rex laid hands on me, 25th anniversary, Central Plaza Hotel, and prophesied over me. It affirmed my life. It was like, wham! The foundation was sealed with Holy Ghost cement. Lift your hands say, I'm ready for it. You know why people fall? No, no prophetic utterance over them. What did Paul tell Timothy? He said, stir up the gift by the laying on of hands. There was a confirmation on your life. Don't lose it. Now, I want to talk to you just before we close on how to develop that ministry of the prophetic. You ready? Okay. 1 Corinthians 12, 31 says, covet earnestly the best gifts. I, I, I'd like to read that because I think it is important you see how he focuses on the prophetic big time. Covet earnestly the best gifts, yet show I unto you a more excellent way. But before that, he talked about the prophetic. He said that you might prophesy because you'll benefit the body of Christ. First, you, you, you develop the ministry by by earnestly coveting the gift. You've got to understand that you have to ask for it. You have to remember that the early church, it was a vital part of their life. you got to understand that it brings the Father of Pentecost, and you got to know that it comes by the Holy Ghost, so you seek the Holy Ghost for the prophetic, and he'll, he'll give it to you. Number two, you have to release your faith. You can't promise that without faith. Faith is very important because we prophesy, the Bible says, according to the proportion of faith. That's in Romans 12, 6 and 8. On tomorrow's program, Pastor Benny Hinn will conclude his insightful message on the three realms of the prophetic as he continues teaching how you can develop this aspect of ministry. And he invites you to visit his website for the opportunity to download a digital audio copy of this complete teaching for further study. It is his free gift to you, so go online today. The Lord Jesus wants the prophetic 
to become a part of your life, as it was in the life of the church, the early church. It was a, a part of their daily experience as believers. And God Almighty wants that prophetic in your life today. That's why I brought this teaching to you on the realms, the three different realms of the prophetic that I pray you're enjoying. Make sure to get the whole teaching because it will really bless your life and stir up the gifts in you. It's time the gifts of the Holy Spirit be stirred up in your soul because God wants to use you prophetically. The world today is in chaos. The world needs the prophetic word. The church needs the prophetic word. As my partner, my prayer for you is that the prophetic will flow out of you, that God Almighty will, will, will anoint your life afresh. We need the fresh oil of the Holy Spirit on our life. We need that oil to be renewed day by day. We need it to be thickened on our life. You know, when oil becomes thin, when it, it, it loses what is called its viscosity, it's no good. That's why you have to change your engine, you know, your oil in the engine, I should say, because it can hurt the engine if it's not renewed. Well, think about your life. It's like an engine, too, that needs that fresh oil, fresh anointing, so we can keep functioning with power. I'm going to pray right now that God Almighty will do this for you, that God will send a fresh anointing on your life, that the prophetic will flow out. Father, dear God, I feel it right now. Dear Jesus, I pray in Jesus' name, in your holy name, Lord, that the prophetic will flow again out of my partner watching this program, out of my friend watching this program. Dear Jesus, move mightily, flow powerfully. Yes, Lord, let resurrection life and power flow out of them. Lord, let miracles be seen in their home and life and ministry and future in Jesus' name. Let every need be met for your glory. And even now, Lord, I pray those in, in need of healing, heal them, remove that sickness, make them whole. Lord, fill them afresh with the Holy Spirit. Yes, let signs and wonders be performed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Dear God, I feel the anointing, I'm telling you. Under this anointing, the Lord gave Pastor Benny a word for you about the importance of coming out of debt. God has promised that you'll be a lender and not a borrower because borrowers are servants to those whom they owe money. If you don't come out of debt, you're going to be caught, you will be caught down the road a few years in the chaos that the debt of this country and the world is going to cause because anyone in debt is going to be caught in the chaos, the collapse that's coming. You must be out of debt so God can bless you with surplus, so God can add to your finance, so God can give you fresh bread, so the Lord can give to you what he promised in the scripture. It shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give to your bosom. So you receive the wealth of the wicked. How can we receive the wealth of the wicked if we're in debt? Get yourself out of debt by sowing yourself out of debt. Listen, listen, I know there's a lot of smart people watching me. There's a lot of smart people watching me who can come out of debt by getting another job, okay? But that's not the way to do it because sooner or later you'll be back in debt again because you're depending on yourself to keep yourself out. It's not going to work. Only God can do that for you because it's spiritual. The problem, debt is a spiritual problem. People having holes in their pockets is a spiritual problem. The way to solve it is by sowing seed into the work of God because you sow yourself out of that. God builds a hedge of protection around you, puts a wall around you, and protects you as it states in Malachi. That heaven will open. Well, when heaven opens, it means heaven is on your side. And God says he'll protect your money. He'll protect the fruits of your ground if you do it the right way. And the right way is sowing seed into God's work. There's an address on the screen. Make sure to send that prayer request and sow a seed. I'm asking many of you to sow $120. You know why? Because the, the, the number 120 is the number of, of deliverance and liberty. 120 days Noah was in the ark. That means it's the end of judgment, beginning of blessings. 120 trumpets in the Old Covenant, 120 in the upper room. Okay, we, we need to pay attention. Now, maybe you're not going to be able to sow the whole amount at, at one time. Fine, sow it in pieces. 
but get to it and do it and watch what God will do with your father. I believe 12 months from today, that one watching this program will be out of debt in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now watch it, expect it, focus on it. It shall be done for sure. See you again. Bless you. Thank you, Pastor Benny, for allowing me to grow here in my father's house. Pastor Benny, thank you for the food. Pastor Benny Hinn continues to enthusiastically provide support for thousands of children in many parts of the world. Food, clothing, and shelter, along with spiritual and educational instruction, are just a few of the necessities provided for these precious boys and girls. A recent visit to Manila confirmed the effectiveness of the ministry's plans and goals. Your gifts are so important to us. As you saw this afternoon, when they got their package, how excited they were to open that. And there was a shirt, pair of pants, a dress. Those things mean so much to them. And then having uh, a beautiful meal together, those are the things that you can see. But you know, beyond that, I want you to know that we're also here to talk about their hearts and to talk about their maturity and their walk with the Lord. What you're a part of is a child's life, discovering their inner heart and their inner potentials. And you've been a part of that. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Recently, Mike Murdoch joined Pastor Benny Hinn to declare that when we honor God, we open the door to his blessings and reward system, particularly in the areas of real estate, romance, and financial favor. All the Ten Commandments are about one topic, honor. That's all they're about. The first four deal with honoring God. Exactly. The last six deal with honoring people. And the first commandment Absolutely. with the promise was number five. If I honor my mother and father, it will go well with me. My days will be long on the earth. And it's the first commandment that God guaranteed a reward system. A reward system. Honor is the seed for rewards. Divine rewards, human rewards, longevity. Mike Murdoch explained that honoring God includes obeying His commandment to sow seed into the work of the gospel and then focus our faith on a specific harvest. I broke the back of poverty with a thousand dollar seed because what you can walk away from, you've mastered. Whoa. If I can walk away from a thousand dollars and leave it at God's feet, I have mastered greed. My seed is the only evidence I've mastered greed. What I sow has an instruction to it. Every time you sow a seed to God, talk to that seed. Wow. Give that seed an instruction. And there's three things that happen. And God spoke to me this the other day. Over the next 90 days, today God spoke to me about this ministry. What's going to happen to the 3,000? God spoke to me the other day and says, I'm going to bless you in real estate. The first place that you'll see God's reaction to this $1,000 seed is somewhere in your real estate. Think about that. And the second? The second is in romance. What? <laughs> romance. Never heard that one before. Never had it before. Just, came, just given to me. I said, Lord, why didn't you give me that years ago? <laughs> had never. But the love of God is going to be shed abroad in your heart. There's going to be marriages where there's been 25 years, 30 years, marriages coming apart. There's going to be a new aura a fragrance of romance. The love of God's going to return to your home. The love of God's going to return. Say it, say it. I receive the anointing for new romance. No means another wife. It doesn't mean another wife. It means restoration. You can't believe what's happened since we begin to speak that. All over the place. There's going to be people watching right now that's going to meet their wife in the next 90 days. Let meet their husband in, in the next name. 90 days. Just say it where you are. I'm a receiver. I'm a receiver. The third harvest, there's going to be somebody like a financial Boaz want to bless you. There's somebody been watching you right now. There's somebody listening to you. There's somebody observing your life and they're going to bless you like you've never been blessed before. Let me say this fast and quick. And his sheep know your voice. Lord, your sheep know yes, your voice. Lord, they do. Your sheep know your voice. Yes, Lord, they do. Precious Holy Spirit, today I sow the first thousand out of the three thousand. You're speaking to three thousand believers who believe and trust your voice. They love your word. We trust your word. We've had many disappointments in our life, but you are not one of them. 
Oh, you are not one of our disappointments. You always do what you say. Amen. You told us in Malachi 3 to prove your existence and see if you would not open the windows of heaven. Amen. I ask you, Father, the next 17 minutes for 3,000 phone calls saying, I am one of the 3,000. I am one of the 3,000. Lord, I ask you for a glorious, glorious anointing on real estate transactions and decisions. There's people that will receive homes debt-free from relatives. There's going to be people that's going to receive the greatest grace. There's people that need to sell their house. There's people that are trying to buy a house. Father, because you are linked to us, our trust is in you, I call it forth. Lord, I decree and declare a romance, a romance return to our home, our spirit, our heart. There's going to be the fragrance of newfound love. It's going to be better than it's ever been before. Marriages will be restored. There's a man who's left his wife. He will return to her, and she will remember what she heard. And we sow this seed with expectation of a financial Boaz come out of the shadows of our life. Father, I don't know who the person is, But I decree right now, you sitting there on your sofa, right now in the next 17 minutes, obey the Holy Spirit. Obey the Holy Spirit. Obey the Holy Spirit. Obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Resistance is defiance. (laughs) Delay is rebellion. I want you to reach for the phone. The phone number's on the screen. Say, I'm one of the 3,000. I'm sowing my $1,000 seed for the kingdom of God. Say to our our, our phone people, say, I'm one of the 3,000 investors in the kingdom. Just say that, investors in the kingdom. I am sending you this book, Seven Laws. I wish every protege knew. It's my seed to the ministry. I'll be sowing the 3,000 books because it's that powerful. We talk about the law of honor. This is a seed of honor. This is a seed of honor. It's not a seed of desperation. It's a seed of honor. I honor my covenant with God. I honor my partner. God do business through me. Now do it now. Do it now. Hallelujah. We're almost out of time. Do it now. The number is on the screen. And that is a mighty anointing on you. Now, can you release that on the people for the Boaz anointing in Jesus' name? In the name of Jesus, I speak to the north, the south, the east, and the west, and I call in every person, every person capable of blessing you. And in the next 90 days, you will receive from people you never thought of, and God will open the very windows of heaven, and you will be stunned at the gifts that come to you because the giver is the seed for giving. Everything you're sowing today has a future. Amen. Call us right now. Call us right now. For the next 17 minutes, even after we go off today, call the number that's there. Pastor Benny Hinn urges you to honor God by sowing your seed today and position yourself to receive blessings in the areas of real estate, romance, and finances. When you do, ask for Mike Murdoch's book, Seven Laws I Wish Every Protege Knew. Don't delay. Call now. 